Today I would like to share on how I do the bed bath for my mother. My mother has Alzheimer's, she's on tube feeding, on a nasogastric tube, so she has hand mittens on her most of the time. And with that, uh, it's no longer convenient to take her to the toilet to give her a bath because uh, uh, not on a daily basis because I'm actually doing the managing for most of the time uh, for her alone. What I will do is that um, every day about about uh, 3.30 p.m. I will start checking her diapers to make sure um, if they are soiled or anything, I will change her diapers. And then after changing her diapers, then I will actually uh, transfer her to the wheelchair and I will take her out for a stroll for about an hour or so. Um, so close to about 5 p.m., I'll take her back. Um, the time she's already seated in the upright position. Then when I do the big, uh, so-called big bath for her, right, I, uh, it's divided into different parts. If you have a person that can help you and carry them to the bathroom and bathe them, then it's fine. You can bathe the whole body very quick. But for me, since I'm uh, bathing her most of the time on my own, I have to find a way to uh, improvise on this. So what I do is that I, I break I clean her in parts. Um, part one, her head. Then second, her her hands because of the mittens um, and arms. The third part is the front and back of her body. Uh, and so the upper arms, the armpits, and the neck. The fourth part is her legs and her feet. Then the fifth part is her private part, the one covered with the diapers. So each part is cleaned separately. And for the diapers, if a diapers is not soy, right, then I wouldn't. I only will clean her di- uh, the, her privates when the diapers are soy. When I have to change the diapers. So after I take her back from her from the stroll, right, she's already in a wheelchair in a seated position. I will put uh, I will you know like in the saloon how you see people wash uh, hair they can put the soap and wash the hair just that for my mom uh, we actually give her very very her hair is like very uh, crop cut very short very short to make it easier to wash and we will give her a bath in the toilet each time we do a haircut for her which is about once every three weeks but daily I will give her big so-called big bath means I will do wipes and big bath for her so when we come in when she's still seated on the wheelchair I will you know you will, I will wrap the like a plastic I use a plastic apron um, that uh, a bit waterproof and then followed by a cloth wrap on her face to prevent the water from seeping down into her eyes and then I have two cloth, uh, two, um, a cloth that is uh, soaked in the uh, soap water. I use baby uh, two-in-one baby soap for the shampoo and also for the body. And then I have two pails of clean water uh, with also a cloth. So I will wash her hair. I will wet her hair with the, uh, with the cloth that I soak in the, in the soapy water. This one is all using uh, the soapy water. I actually take using the uh, using the shower. In the shower, we can adjust. Uh, we can adjust the heater, right? So the water is warm, and then I put a, a bit on the um, on the small on a small container, and then I actually soak the cloth, and then I will uh, wet her hair with it. After I cover the, her face and as well as her body, just like how you see in the saloon, they cover and protect the face. Then I will uh, two times with the soapy water. Then after that, I will wipe. Then I will put two times with the water. Means I actually squeeze the cloth, the water, the one with the water. I squeeze the cloth and then let the water run down uh, a bit. And then after that, I will do the wiping. So this has managed to keep her hair um, clean. But she, her hair has to be very, very short so that it's easier. And if, if it's for guys, you can actually shave 
uh, their hair bald, so that it's very easy to clean and then, and then they won't get dandruff. After cleaning her hair, right, uh, wiping it dry, they are move on to her hands. While she's still seated, it's easier to uh, manage because they are Alzheimer, so they will struggle. Uh, they will struggle, and um, then and it's easier to actually uh, manage it if they are being seated. So I take um, also the same container with the soapy water. I take off. I, I line with the. Uh, the same apron and the cloth that I use to wash her hair lying on her lap and then I take out her mitten and then after that I wash with the soapy water after washing with soapy water I actually uh, wash with the clean water um, and then after washing I wipe her hand dry and then put back the mitten for both her hands so after her head and her hands is settled right now it comes to the her neck her upper arms and the front part of her body so that one has i will get her to uh, because we can't really wipe and take off their clothes if let's say they are on a wheelchair so what i do is that i will i have a gate belt on her right i will i will actually tighten her i will put in the gate use the gate belt uh, and then i will leave her back to in a seated position at the edge of her bed and then from there take off her clothes the top part uh, and lying a bit on the waist so that the water doesn't trickle down into her diapers and uh, into her diapers and after that, I will start wiping her upper body the back and the front uh, the chest area the front the armpits the neck so our uh, upper arms I will start wiping with the soapy with the cloth using the soapy water so after wiping uh, twice I go through um, I find that the water has to be a bit soapy because uh, it will help uh, it will it will clean better and also um, of course it will trickle down the water will trickle down so I, I will put a plastic before I carry her and put her to the bed, I already have a plastic layer lining on the bed itself already. So after I, I wash with the soap, uh, soapy water, then wipe off the soap, then I will rinse twice with the with cloth you using from the pail, the pail of clean water. I have two pails because when you wash and you rinse, right, there will be one pail, the water is more dirty and then you can try, you can you can squeeze the cloth dry and transfer to a cleaner pail. So what I do is I, I will do that and then after that I will there will be two like um, the water will be I will squeeze a bit like like it's a bit wet the water then after that I will rinse again with the two pails of water then after that dry her a bit then uh, squeeze again so do the wipe then after that after that is being done I will wipe her dry put powder uh, put powder, apply powder on her back and the front, baby powder, uh, put on her clothes and then let her lie down. Then when she lies down, right, then the next thing I will clean is her legs because I really have that plastic sheet. So I will make, uh, when she lie down, her legs, I put it, uh, put it in the, like, uh, like a band, her, band her knees upwards. Then from there, I will actually uh, use the cloth, the wet cloth the soapy one to actually wipe wipe uh, with soapy water twice after wiping then uh, use a dryer cloth to dry it and after that, I'll use a uh, clean water to rinse off the soap uh, twice so the the cloth is that you uh, it's soaked in water it's wet but it's not dripping wet it's just like when you squeeze uh, like you wipe it's wet you, you wet the surface is cleaner because previously if I if you just do a dry wipe right what happens is that uh, they're gonna call uh, when they when they when they sweat and all this it's not gonna clean properly so you'll find that there's a lot of flakes of skin that will come off uh, like their skin seems to be very dry that one can indicate that um, the cleaning is not done properly so after I actually start using the wet cloth right I wipe then also two times with the wet cloth means you go through uh, after the soap then you wipe it dry because the legs is wet so you wipe it a bit dry then you use the cloth which is soaked in the water and then you go through the legs again um, again uh, and then I rinse uh, twice with the water 
Then after that, I will wash her feet also with water. Her feet, I, what I take is I take a small container, put in some water, and then uh, warm water. And then I put her feet and then I rinse. Uh, rinse with the water. So like you have to carry her feet and she's lying on the bed on the plastic sheet. So you have to be very careful and mindful because sometimes they kick at the thing, the other leg will kick and then the water will spill and then it wet the bed. So if you are careful then uh, and talk to them nicely and coax them nicely, then you will always tell them what you're going to do so that they won't panic. You know, because sometimes they panic, right? They will start pushing or even kicking, uh, then it gets difficult. So that's, after that, I dry her up, I will put her on socks for her because uh, to make sure her feet are not cold. Then put on pants. Pants, uh, pants you, I use, like, my mother is quite, is not, t- she quite considered on the slim side now, but I use XXL size because when you pull out the pants, it's loose uh, and it's easier for, uh, to put them on, on her because she's also wearing the diapers. So after that, of course, I will also check her diapers. If her diapers is wet, I will change it. I have another tutorial on how to change, how I change the diapers. So it is. So after that is all being done, right, I will remove all the cloth and all the, uh, the plastic sheets and everything from the, her bed. And then we will do the laundry. So that's how um, I give her a big bath. It, this takes me about an hour to complete. The whole process that I described takes me about an hour. I do it slowly. I take my time. I'm not stressed about it. Uh, and also, when we are washing, especially the top and the legs, right? Um, I off all the air con. So I will have a fan blowing, um, not facing her bed, but blowing in another direction to have some ventilation. And if possible, you can also open the windows. So the, her bathing will be about uh, about 5 to 6 p.m. every day. After bathing, I, I will do the phlegm suction. And after the phlegm suction, then I'll give her dinner. Sometimes if I've already done the phlegm suction in the afternoon, then I would not do it during that time. And also, sometimes also I need to change the tape on her nasogastric, the tape that's securing her nasogastric tube. So in all this, if I have to do flame suction and change the tape, you know, sometimes uh, she would finish and she will have her dinner about 7 p.m. So that's how um, I manage. Uh, I, I manage. I find that breaking down the past is easier because why I need to uh, break down the past is because it's not easy to get them to, uh, to they are not going to sit nicely and let them bathe you. Uh, and uh, sorry, and let you bathe them, uh, do a big wipe. So they always like when you try to wipe them, they will always want to lie down. So the part I always find very challenging is when I have to wash the top part of her, the, the back. Her, it's very important to wash her back because she likes to lie flat on the back most of the time. So it's need, I need to clean it properly. That part is a bit challenging. So sometimes when she insists to lie down, right, I will get help for another person to help to hold her while I walk. I quickly do the washing up. After the top part of her um, uh, is washed, right, then I have her lie down. Then when I wash her legs, she can be in a lie down position. For her buttocks and uh, her private parts, all this is I clean it during the time when I change her diaper. So it's a uh, it's a separate it's separately done. So that's how I do it. I split into different parts and I find that it becomes manageable when it comes to uh, giving her this so-called bed bath. I do it every day without fail because uh, since she lie down most of the time, right, it's important um, to do it because it will keep them, especially uh, clean up their sweat and uh, help in the prevention of the bed sores. Okay, hope this helped. Um, for obvious reason, I could not demonstrate um, this, but I hope that the explanation will give you an idea on how to do it. And uh, you can find your own ways to improvise as well and help them um, uh, use a bit of creativity and can figure something out. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.